All right. There we are. Parker office hour, uh, August 11th it is. And Thor just uh, said there is a PR out by him uh, adding persistence to, to Parker, which is super nice. Want to recap real quick um, since I was too late restarting starting the recording? Yep. So basically, this allows you to kill Parka, and it will store the um, the profiling data into the the bucket storage that's set up. Um, the default config we ship with Parka uses just your local file system, um, but you could, in theory, use anything that the object storage. Uh, bucket package supports so S3 compatible stuff. Um, and then it also drops the meta storage onto local disk as well. But this allows you to start and restart Parka as needed um, and query historical data so it's not lost anymore like it used to. Um, this can be enabled with the new flag dash dash enable persistence. And uh, next time I'll give a demo of it. Remind me. Fair enough. Yeah. What, what was the default configuration that we went with? Do we always flush whatever is also in the right ahead block to a um, persistent block, or do we only do it on? So right ahead log is a different flag that you can optionally turn on with persistence. So there's an enable wall flag now. Um, so you can enable persistence without the wall, or you can enable persistence with the wall. Um, and if we gracefully shut down, so if we shut down, we successfully drop all of the, or I guess the block to, to bucket storage, um, then we'll just uh, get rid of the wall. However, if like we crash or something and we're not able to actually persist that block, then that's when we'd come up and, and replay the wall. Very cool. This is one of those things that we had to hack around in the Thanos project because like Prometheus um, TSDB wasn't like first class object storage made, right? Uh, so this is uh, really exciting to see how like now that we are building a database that is like primarily for object storage that we can do these things natively. Very cool. I'm excited yeah, I about that. One of the future changes would that would be nice would be to also allow us to write the Badger store to object storage instead of uh, local disk as well, because right now it's kind of if you if you aren't using the local disk for object storage, then you have things stored in two locations, which isn't the best user experience. So, but that will be further down the road. Did you check their interface for for writing um, to this? Because I don't think they. Have an interface or something. I think they like actually use the OS package and write directly to this, yeah, with, that's, which is kind of unfortunate. That's so. correct. Um, but what we could do is write it to disk first and then ship it uh, using the object storage um, mm -hmm. and do some things there. Yeah. Or open an issue upstream and see what we can do about it. <laughs> or that. Given yeah. it's open source. Nice. No, that's very exciting, all of it, um, and very much looking forward to it. I think there are some limitations if people were to enable um, persistence right now. Um, I think you said like it is reading through all the blocks always, right? So yeah, it parses the metadata of all blocks right now. Um, that's something that we'll want to kind of figure out how to handle um, since we don't treat times the timestamp column as anything other than just a normal column. It seems a little weird to try to base the filter queries that use that column um, against the like the block ULID. So we could do it that way, or I don't know, maybe add that as like a query hint somehow. I'm not entirely certain. But yeah, right now it's even if you try to do like a, a last 15 minute query, it gets really slow if you have multiple multiple hours of retention because uh, it'll it'll try to scan through it all even though it's not in the last 15 minutes, which is unfortunate. So there'd be dragons <laughs> if you enable this. I, I, I suspect we'll never get around having an index of blocks. And like this so sounds like something that also needs to go into something Badger-ish. Yeah, there's a few ways to handle it. Honestly, if we just did a 
you know, if we compared the the ULID that all blocks are prefixed with against the timestamp we're querying, that would get us a long ways as well. But yeah, we might need an actual index of the blocks as well. Yeah. I suppose it, it depends on you know how, just how much retention we actually want to support, right? Um, it, it, if if we can get away with always like at startup scanning through all the blocks, then we can have an in-memory index of the blocks themselves. Um, but if that's not not an option, we might need to resort to something where we on persisting write something to some index. But yeah, I think we can totally start with something in memory. Very cool, very cool. Yeah, looking forward to that. Probably nice to discuss on a on an issue on, on Parker. Would be good. Um yeah, I don't know, like anything we we can discuss. Um I was just looking through PRs again, also before the call, but like maybe there was something that's open. Um, I don't know, uh, Maxine, do you want to discuss anything you added for the pre-commit hook, which was pretty cool? Um, anything to, to show and tell maybe around that? Um, obviously, no pressure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I think I described it in PR for those who didn't see the PR. So just I did the pre-commit simply a framework with uh, Python with a configuration in YAML. And what's pretty cool about it is, yeah, you define your, your hooks in YAML. So every project can include the little config, and then you import that in your project. Um, the, the, the tool pre-commit takes care of validating that project, kind of like isolated in a hook itself. So for example, a JSONet hook for format will compile JSONet and run FMT on the on the your JSONet files. And you don't need even to think about I need to install JSONet on my machine, I need to be able to my path. You need to have Go though to be able to compile it. But that's it. And it's the same thing for any for node. If you don't have Node.js installed on your, on your machine, it will download Node.js for the, the hook and will install all the node modules in it. Python it will create a virtual one and that's it's with a few languages like that. So I think all the hooks are done. You don't need to think about anything but having pre-commit, Go, and Docker. So some hooks like Haskell. Haskell is not supported by pre-commit, but pre-commit supports Docker. So it puts a Docker image and one Docker image on your uh, things for the shell scripts, but it uses that. So very handy. Um, it only When you commit, it only runs the hooks you need for the files. So if you commit just on the files, you won't run the Go hooks. So it, yeah, very handy. I'm going to run it in the CI to make sure that everything is good. Yeah, any questions? Or any feedback? <laughs> Just want to point out how cool it is. I sadly didn't work on, on Parker today, so I still need to try it. But any anybody else already uh, run into it? And how did it work out? No, Thor has been just working on FrostDB, I guess, exclusively. But yeah, I'm I'm super excited about this. Um, I I always set this up like manually in the editor, but this gives us like a um, an equal uh, playground or playing field. I don't know, Thor. Correct me. What's the correct word? <laughs> an equal playing field, I think. Um, right. For 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 all the projects, no matter what editor you're using, um, which is which is always good. Um, so it's completely independent. And yeah, as you said, I, I, I really appreciate that it only runs the the hooks it needs to based on the files that changed. Good stuff. Any other comments? Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know, like, um, there are some some uh, PRs pending about the call graph and stuff. Uh, Monica and Manoj are working on, which is super exciting. But I'm I'm sure they'll come on the call again to to give a demo once it's a bit more done. Um, persistence by Thor, super super awesome, and obviously many more things in the in the making and planning, but not yet implemented. And I don't know anything someone else wants to talk about. Uh, could also be frosty be related only. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, oh, yeah. 
I'm going to preface this by saying this might be a very niche use case because it's not exactly related to continuous profiling. So a couple of days ago, I, uh, we saw that a certain pod had uh, spiked in uh, CPU and other resources, and it was already emitting pprof uh, data. So I looked at it and uh, I saw all these random numbers. And the first thought I had was, if only there was uh, a visualization tool that someone had built. So is there a way that uh, I could uh, import my downloaded uh, pprof data into Parka and then compare profiles? Or uh, perhaps like, uh, would you like to uh, support this? So if you accept peers or something for this. Yeah, I mean, that sounds pretty exciting to support. Um, for sure, like uh, two two ways of doing this, I guess. Like one is Parker could just watch a folder um, where you drop files, like pprof uh, files, for example, and then it like picks them up and and ingests them. And the other the other one I, I can obviously think about is using the gRPC API we have. So the Parker agent always pushes profiles to to Parker via gRPC, so we could have some some CLI that you point files to, and then it uh, starts in uh, uh, sending those via gRPC to, to Parker. Um, on the other hand, we could potentially do something in the UI where you have like a drag and drop thing, and you drop them into the UI, and it does the call in the background from the browser even. So multiple, multiple ways of doing this. Right now, we don't really have anything uh, in, that, in that realm, but we yeah, I think like the CLI to send things via gRPC should be should be pretty pretty nice of a of a little hack project um, if you want to give it a try. Any yeah, so any that ideas? approach is basically uh, what I like because my use case is that uh, I can't run Parka on company infrastructure, so I'd like to use it for myself instead uh, to visualize it. Uh, so yeah, I'll try to work on a document before uh, starting on this. Thanks. How do you visualize? How uh, So if I don't use Parka, uh, uh, how exactly do I make sense of the numbers that I see that this memory address has this much uh, number uh, profiles? So some, something else that um, th this has nothing to do with uh, Parka, but something that we actually host as Polar Signals is this page called uh, pprof.me, um, where you can upload your pprof profile, and you can um, you'll get a link, and you can also share the link with your team or something. Um, this looks a little bit outdated, but this is like um, basically old Parka um, UI components. The front end team is actually working on updating this to the latest um, kind of components, so it'll it'll look identical to to Parka. Thanks. I mean, how 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 do you retrieve how do you retrieve these these profiles? Do you like port forward to some degree to the debug uh, info, the debug pprof endpoints, or how do you retrieve the the profiles there? Because if if that's what you're doing, you can still like forward or make like a, a tunnel to those endpoints and then scrape them with a locally running uh, Parker instance, right? That might actually be the yeah, easiest so way. That time that uh, simply port forward on debug slash pprof and then download profiles. Yeah, and then, yeah, if you, if you can do that, then you can even run Parker locally and point Parker to the local local host and then call in whatever uh, port you're forwarding. And then it will basically continuously scrape the pprof endpoints through that tunnel, um, so, if that's something that's possible for you. Interesting. I'll so you basically down. have. <laughs> yeah, Sorry? so basically I'm running. So basically I'm running Parka, and it's not on any infrastructure that shouldn't have. Yeah, nice. Yeah. I mean, yeah, exactly. Like you can run Parker locally and point it to anything 
that's available. And if it happens to be a tunnel, that's that's totally fine. Same as true for Prometheus, for example. If you somehow get a slash metrics endpoint for Prometheus, you can always run a Prometheus locally and, and also scrape, scrape that endpoint from your local computer as well. And then have it visualized locally. So both of, works for both Prometheus and, and Parker, for example. But I, I, I'm kind of like interested in exploring the possibilities of like dragging and dropping profiles into a locally running Parker via the UI with drag and drop. <laughs> I don't know. It's more of a fan UI thing, I guess, but an interesting, an interesting um, and helpful feature for, for maybe users who just need something to visualize. I, I do think this could be useful because we have heard that people, you know, don't necessarily want to upload their um, people of profile to like publicly hosted infrastructure like what we do. Um, so I, I think it could be an interesting use case. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you if you want, um, you can open an issue about like importing profiles from the UI or something like that. I think that that would be pretty cool. Um, yeah, and I think I think we we have like the the gRPC web um, protocol we are using from the UI. It should also be able to just upload the profiles as like bytes um, uh, from the UI. So it should be possible. It's mostly a UI thing. Yeah, feel free to open an issue, and we'll discuss more in details there. <laughs> Anything else? Please go ahead. There is one. Um, um, so I've been deploying Parka in our staging and production environment. Uh, it's been great so far. The the only issue that we are eating right now, and I need I need to uh, to open a a GitHub issue about it is when we have the the Parka server going down, um, we end up seeing profiles in the Parka UI without any symbols. Um, so I haven't checked how the Parka agent is refreshing or sending back all the symbols that is discovering discovering for all the binary. Um, but yeah, we en we end up having to redeploy the entire fleet. Uh, meaning that when you have when you have the Parka server going down, you have to uh, rolling restart all the Parka agents, um, which on a on a small cluster it's it's okay, but on a production one we have to redeploy thousand of like we have to rolling restart thousand of agents uh, ever so often. So yeah, I'm just curious if that's a known issue or is that something new? But I, I would I would that's probably just open of... a. It's kind of funny because for this very reason, we have like a. <coughs> so the Parka agent does have a cache to not mm -hmm. always request um, whether debug infos already exist. Um, but this cache does expire. So it should actually, after a couple of minutes, attempt to re upload the debug info. So this is interesting that this is not happening. Yeah. Like it's not happening even after like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Interesting. De definitely please open an issue about this. Yep. Yeah, it shouldn't be the norm that you need to r roll out your entire Parker yeah. Asian fleet. Like that's that's really not the um, scenario we want to have. Now that you say it, actually, this might be happening on the demo environment as well. I, I seen that sometimes there are, there are prop issues with uh, symbolization, and I wonder if we now restarted the Parka agents whether it would start working. Let me try. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I am releasing the current demo instance of Parka. No, you need to do, you need to restart the Parka agents. Yeah, uh, only the agents. Yes. But the the okay, but then then I don't even understand the the cache is only in memory, right? The or cache is, is the cache is in Parka agents. 
memory. Yes. So if it like freshly restarts, it doesn't have any cache at all. So That's right. It will... So it so will definitely attempt to upload. Yeah. And then it doesn't. That's really interesting. No, so, no what, what, what happens, what Julian was saying is that if they then restart Parka and the debug infos are gone, then Parka agent won't uh, attempt to re-upload them. That's how I understood what you were saying, right? Yeah. Yeah, basically, if you have, let's say you have the Parka, everything is running properly, right? And you have the Parka server going down for whatever reason. In, in our case, it's out of memory because the size of the deployment, right? Um, which is which is totally fine because for now we don't, we don't care much about that. Um, when that happens, the Parka agent is never going to send back um, the, the 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 my guess is that I, I I have to take a look at the code, but my guess is that inside you're probably going to have multiple calls where you're going to send the profile on one end and the metadata of the binary on the other end. Um, and my guess is that the park agent doesn't send back any of the, yeah, we have the exact same issue. It's never going to send back the, the mm -hmm. symbols and everything from the binary metadata. So you end up with, with that, yeah. And if you restart the park agent, it's going to rediscover all the binaries, it's going to refresh the thing, it's going to send back all the metadata. So so if you restart the park agent, that works, yeah. yeah. Yep. So yeah, that, like the, the the thing I don't know. Do you have like Prometheus instrumentation on the Parka server itself? Yeah, yeah, we 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 have we have Prometheus everywhere. Um, I, I don't think there is. A, I don't. I didn't look at it, but I, I don't know if there is any metric about refreshing the cache. Maybe there is. Um, uh, not about refreshing the cache. The the um. But that the might be something I'm, interesting to add on the package and to. Yeah, sure the the reason I'm asking is if you then look at the. Um, the debug info service that has uh, different methods for um, for checking if uh, the debug infos exist um, at all. Um, and then there are the requests uh, to actually upload. So here you can see, okay, let me make it bigger. Uh, here you can see we have uh, done, like after restarting Paka itself, the server, it uh, the Parker agents will um, ask a Parker server again if uh, these de debug symbols exist. No, that's because oh. I just restarted the agents. <laughs> okay, interesting. So you did restart the agents. Yes, I just did. <laughs> okay. So yeah, anyway, so all, I, will, I, will, these, I will open it. Yeah, okay. yeah. yeah like like um, yeah, open the issue for sure. Um, and yeah, like what we want to see is that in here the requests are happening i guess so yeah we can see that we we aren't even checking like the caches never expire i guess is what we're seeing because there aren't any requests for for hours and i i guess like this is restarts of parka agents so we should be at least like every like five minutes or 15 minutes be seeing some some requests so yeah i guess that validates that this is broken and like if you're seeing seeing the same thing on your your site, then I guess, yeah, the caches don't expire. Please open an issue, though. Yeah. I, I just checked the, the issue is now resolved. So the, the all the symbols that weren't being symbolized before are now symbolized correctly. So this is definitely something wrong here. Thanks for mentioning it. Yeah, for sure. Sure thing. tricked me there. I thought it was working. <laughs> Turns out you restarted the agent. <laughs> it, 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 it's funny, though, because I know that the agent team has mentioned something like this before, and we were confused why in Polar Signals Cloud this wasn't happening. And I think the only reason is because in Polar Signals Cloud, we actually persist the debug infos. So it's much less noticeable that you know oh. if, if things restart. Um, the binaries are still there. Unless it's new binaries that aren't being properly uploaded, everything continues to work on that in that setup. So this is actually something that you can do as well in Parka. You can 
uh, change the configuration of Parka to upload the debug infos to an object storage provider instead of like local file system and use a, a file system that's ephemeral. So in that way, then you would also persist them. So there seems to be a bug in Parker agent. <laughs> Nonetheless, yeah. yes. Right. I guess, I guess, <laughs> Andrew, do you have anything to ask? Everybody else had questions now. No pressure. All right. Uh, um, nothing from me at the moment, thanks. All right, awesome. Yeah, then I guess we can end it here. Um, I'm speaking a bit more slowly, just in case there is something coming up still. Can you uh, maybe, everybody maybe, something? Maybe there is a discussion I would love to get is um, how like, is there a roadmap, and if so, when, where, about what's the next step to, like, because, like, um, right now, FrostDB is going to persist parquet data and so on and so forth. Um, how do we get from we have the data to we aggregate the data and do some cool stuff with it and send that to, I don't know, let's say we aggregate the data, build some more metrics, send that to, to Prometheus and whatnot. Um, is there a, do you have a public roadmap about the thing that you are thinking about building um, somewhere, maybe? So we had a retrospective three weeks ago internally, like somewhat unrelated to Parka, but um, one of the action items is for Kemal and I to, to work on uh, kind of exposing the roadmaps that are in our minds and that uh, we have like as discussions between ourselves, um, which is not the place to document them. They should be in public documents. They should be, I think we, we said we wanna have them in project boards on the Parka organization um, so that it is a lot more visible. But um, yeah, if there's anything that you're missing right now already and you want to put on the roadmap, then feel free to, to write to us on Discord or open an issue, I think. Because um, it seems you're like working on some, some slightly different things. So the things you might be looking for aren't necessarily the things we are looking for, but we can definitely merge um, those roadmaps and um, features you have in mind. Sounds good. Since Parka is still an open source project uh, with a neutral governance. Um, we are totally happy to, to get um, others involved as well, right? So yeah, please, please do and please communicate your, your wishes for a roadmap. And hopefully <laughs> Kamal and I can, can get some time dedicated to, to create these more public roadmaps. Sweet. Just want to make sure, though, that I understood what, what you were asking. Were you asking about a FrostDB roadmap to like use for, like, like let's say, more general purpose things? Or yeah. it, it's kind of both things. Like, um, for example, now that we have, um, let, let, let's say we, we keep moving with continuous profiling and we have this data and we have all of that in, in, in S3 because we use S3 right now. We have all this Sparky data. Now there is opportunities to um, gather some of the information and to help on um, doing some prioritization on the work on the Twilio side. Let's say, for example, it could be very neat to say, give me the, the function that use the most of the CPU in the entire infra so that that's where we should probably focus our time because when we are going to optimize that specific function, we are going to dramatically reduce the CPU time used across the entire org. Um, so this kind of uh, question that I'm very interested to ask once we have the data there and once we can query things. And in the end, 
the the same query layer or the same way you're going to query the profiling data, you will be able to do to use the same mechanism to to query other data that's coming from FrostDB, right? So like for example, I'm I'm playing with the POC of putting open telemetry traces into FrostDB. Um, then we can build aggregation and so on and so forth. And the same mechanism to query that data uh, could be used for profiling and tracing, uh, which is very interesting. And then there is things about, um, and then it's getting a bit more fancy, right? Um, like for example, there, there was a, another profiling tool that was giving you an estimation of the carbon consumption per function, which is very fancy, but that's also the kind of thing that we can build once we have the data and once we can query it, you know? Um, so yeah, I think having a, a roadmap could help to figure out where we can put the effort next. Yeah, like um, I think most of the, the things that you said actually um, opening Parka uh, under issues, um, we actually have pinned uh, a Sorry. very important issue for a query language. And I think most of the things that you just said kind of like fall into this issue. So feel free to read through it and like definitely comment with your use cases on, on this one. Um, it is totally the thing that we are kind of like driving all of this from. Um, so yeah, like feel free to, to add to the conversation. And then I think from that we will derive like like the concrete features and enhancements we need to do to to like a query engine, and super super exciting. Um, we just had a new hire, Alfonso, who started, and he's worked on query query engines and optimizations before. So we'll definitely have a lot more um, time and and power being spent on on this problem um, in the next months and weeks. Claire, I hope it's easy to find, like, <laughs> just right there, pinned. No, but everything you said makes sense. And yeah, um, we'll definitely want to get to to these things. And uh, again, FrostDB being a general purpose column now, uh, columnar storage that's embeddable in Go, um, it definitely fits right in. All right. Then anything else from you, Julian? <laughs> nope. Okay, perfect. <laughs> and anybody else? No, these, these were great topics. Uh, thanks for bringing them up and uh, the back and the features and stuff. Like you, you kind of like, you know exactly <laughs> what we are thinking of as well. Um, anything else from anyone else? All right, then um, we will see each other in two weeks again. Um, there is going to be uh, an exciting demo that's going to happen for system-wide profiling by Javier. He said he, he hopes to, to do that demo by then in two weeks. So make sure to, to join next time for an exciting demo. I'm really, really looking forward to this because um, all of a sudden you can see everything on the host. That will be, will be super, super dope. Um, and yeah, follow us on Twitter, everything social media wise. And, um, yeah, feel free to keep in, in touch during the next two weeks on Discord as well and get up issues, PRs, etc. All right. And that's it. Take care, everybody. See ya. Bye for now. See ya.